Less than 20% of the world's ocean floors have been explored. What lies in the other 80%? For now, that remains a mystery. Many strange ruins and artifacts have been discovered at the bottom of the ocean, some of which are thousands of feet underwater. Why have they become submerged deep below the ocean's surface? What cultures are responsible for their creation, and how long ago were they made? There are many questions to be asked about these deep-sea discoveries. Let's take a look at some of the most notable and most mysterious sunken structures. Off the coast of Cuba in 2001, a marine engineer named Pauline Zalitsky had been using sonar and discovered a complex of ancient ruins under the ocean, submerged 600 to 750 meters, or 2,000 to 2,460 feet deep. The sonar images of the ancient complex look very similar to LiDAR images that were taken in Guatemala of a completely overgrown Mayan city. Skeptics of the Cuban underwater city say that its existence is out of place, and that the complex could not have been submerged under natural conditions. Seeing as how the Cuban pyramid structures look nearly identical to confirmed images of ancient complexes, and that the images of the Cuban submerged city have never been debunked, with only the age and circumstances of the structure in question, it's clear that something had occurred in the past which had caused this ancient city to be submerged. How long ago would this structure have been made, and why is it now 2,000 feet under the ocean? Let's take a look at some other submerged ancient structures around the world, and see if any parallels can be drawn. On the western side of the Bahamas sits an island called Bimini. Scuba divers visiting Bimini in 1968 discovered very strange, man-made rock structures under the sands off the coast of Bimini. Large brick-like stones are laid out across the seafloor, forming what looks like a road or to some, a collapsed and buried wall. It's believed by many people that the Bimini Road stones are the remnants of an ancient city that became submerged, possibly even the lost city of Atlantis. The stones of the Bimini Road closely resemble the appearance of ancient Roman and Greek roads. Although it's still unknown what culture is responsible for the Bimini Road, it is clear that they're man-made due to their layout and design. At another island chain in the Atlantic Ocean called the Azores, there's an even more mysterious ancient structure under the surface, so deep that divers have not yet made the journey to explore it. Between the San Miguel and Tercera Islands, a Portuguese sailor in 2013 had used sonar on the ocean floor and discovered a huge pyramid deep underwater. The sonar had approximated the pyramid to be 60 meters or about 197 feet tall, with a very clearly defined shape that could not have been made through natural processes. The shape of the pyramid most closely resembles pyramids found in Egypt. It may just be a coincidence, but Plato had learned of the legend of the lost city of Atlantis from the Egyptians, and the Egyptians believed that Atlantis was located right where the Azores Islands are. You may be wondering, how could Atlantis have been in the Azores, but also in the Bahamas? Well, this is just a theory, but if there used to only be a single continent, and Atlantis had somehow existed when all of our modern continents were still together, then the Azores and the Bahamas would have been at the same location. A city located along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge would have been submerged and spread along the entire Atlantic Ocean when the unified continent split apart. If this scenario were to be the case, then Atlantis is unlikely to have been the only advanced city that existed in the past. It's not surprising, therefore, that submerged ancient ruins have been found in other locations across the world. Another ancient stone structure was discovered off the coast of a small Japanese island named Yonaguni. This structure lies in far more shallow waters than the Azores Pyramid, only about 85 feet or 25 meters deep, so divers have been able to photograph the structure up close. The Yonaguni Monument has been estimated to be 200 to 500 feet or 60 to 150 meters wide depending on what portions of the structure are measured. The structure has a geometrically complex shape composed of extremely large stones. The precise shape of the structure and its similarities to other step pyramids and temples are evidence that the Yonaguni Monument was created by humans rather than by the processes of nature. The ruins were first discovered by a diver in 1986 while he was searching for hammerhead sharks. The diver reported his find, having observed that the structure was a sunken temple of some sort. A marine geologist at the University of Ryukyu in Japan investigated the ruins for almost 20 years, confirming that it was indeed man-made. There's still no explanation for who built the Yonaguni Monument, what its purpose is, or how it became submerged. There could even be more of the structure buried under the sediment. The portion of Yonaguni that can be seen could possibly just be the top part of the structure. 
The general consensus is that the Yonaguni Monument is approximately 10,000 years old, and that it was indeed built by an unknown ancient culture. It's often referred to as Japan's Atlantis, since it indicates the existence of an advanced ancient civilization that would have been able to create such an elaborate structure so long ago. The Yonaguni Monument would have been constructed above water initially, eventually becoming submerged due to some massive catastrophe, seemingly the same catastrophe that submerged many other ancient structures across Earth and split apart the continents. Between Sweden and Finland in the northern Baltic Sea, a very unusual submerged structure was discovered. A group of Swedish sailors in 2011 had been using sonar to search for sunken treasure and discovered what's now known as the Baltic Sea Anomaly. There's been many different theories about what it actually is, but there's been no official answer in over a decade. Strangely, it's been claimed that electronic equipment starts to malfunction around 650 feet or 200 meters within the structure, and that a strong radio signal has been detected coming from the anomaly. The sonar images of the Baltic Sea Anomaly cannot be used to determine what it's made of. People assume that's made of stone, but there's actually no solid basis for this. Leading up to the anomaly, there's even a trail that looks like a giant skid mark, similar to what would be seen if a flying vehicle had crash landed. The shape of the Baltic Sea Anomaly is unnatural, indicating that's not a natural formation. What is the Baltic Sea Anomaly, really? The only way to know is to take a closer look at it. Off of the west coast of Cape Horn, an Antarctic Oceanographic Research ship in 1964 named the U.S. N.S. Eltonen photographed a strange image of the ocean floor. Over 12,800 feet, which is about two and a half miles or four kilometers, underwater, there's an unusual structure resembling an antenna. The scientists of the U.S. N.S. Eltonen state that the object photographed was approximately 600 meters or 2,000 feet tall, which is about the same height as the Warsaw radio mast in the Tokyo Skytree radio tower. Modern scientists believe that this structure, known as the Eltonen antenna, is simply a type of deep sea sponge called the Chondrocladia concrescens. However, the scientists working on the USNS Eltonen would have known if the object that they were observing was a sea sponge. No sea sponge is 2,000 feet tall. Sea sponges are only ever a few feet tall, at most. There would also have been more than just a single one of these objects, as the Chondrocladia concrescens sponge is known to reproduce at a rapid rate asexually and requires sunlight to live, which is not present 2.5 miles underwater. Just because the Eltonen antenna somewhat resembles a sea sponge, that does not have to be what it is. A car resembling a ladybug is not actually a ladybug. A rock shaped like an elephant is not actually an elephant. With the sponge theory being clearly debunked, there's no other feasible explanations for what the Elton and Antenna actually is. Why are there so many large, man-made structures deep under the world's oceans and seas? What cultures are responsible for the existence of each of these strange structures? The underwater ruins that we've discussed in this video are by no means the only ones. These are just some of the most notable examples. There are many more ancient structures that have been discovered under the world's oceans. The fact that some of these structures were discovered in the Bermuda Triangle and the Dragon's Triangle where mysterious things are known to occur for no apparent reason adds another layer of mystery to these ancient ruins. As stated at the beginning of this video, less than 20% of the ocean floors have been explored, so there are undoubtedly many more anomalies to be discovered. What stranger things will be found underwater in the future? The only way to know is to keep exploring with an open mind.